This is Marco and I'm going to cover the section of this webinar focused on submitting applications um, to the app stores um, focusing on mobile applications. The stores considered are the Google Play Store for Android and the Apple App Store for iOS. Why using app stores? What's important to underline is you have an unprecedented distribution opportunity in the past, it would have been very difficult to get application in the hands of, of thousands of people. And now you can get your application easily in the, in the hands of millions of people. So the opportunity and the fact that the entire distribution management, distribution cost, user management is completely up to the stores. And basically, you can get free unlimited distributions for your applications is really extremely significant. Now these offer also monetization options, which I'm not really going to focus on. To. Now what's important is that the Rust Studio IDE can build store-ready apps. There are options in the project configuration that are specifically focused on store, and then you can deploy, uh, after building the application, deploy the application to the store, to the store format, which doesn't mean uploading, but means uh, doing the code signing, doing all of the steps that are needed for the following steps. Now the physical upload is done with store-specific tools. So which are the steps you have to remember doing, uh, which might be different from the development side of the application for uh, store submission? So first, remember building a release version. Don't keep the bug information uh, or extra information of any type. Release versions are generally smaller in terms of executable size. You need to create graphics. Uh, you need to provide the icons for each possible resolution. There are even more on Android, but there are quite a few also on iOS. And splash screens, if you have a splash screen. This is cumbersome. You need like dozens of icon sizes, for example. There are external tools that can at least help you building the icons of the physical size and proper number of, bit of pixels. Then I'm going to show you. You need to provide proper application information, uh, an app name, uh, and please don't keep Embracador.com in your uh, Android app names. That makes very little sense, although there are hundreds on the store that are that still have the Embracador.com name in the configuration. Also, you need to provide a proper version number. Well. Easily you can start with one, but consider that on Android, the release number is an absolute continuous number, one, two, whatever. On iOS, there is a major dot minor model. For Android, you also need to define permissions uh, in the IDE and consider that, I mean, you might not need a lot of permissions for the user like uh, internet access or, or file, local file access, but remember that applications get updated auto almost automatically on these platforms. However, if you change the permissions, Android requires the user to specifically uh, approve the application for, for update. So you'll have a lower update rate. On iOS, you the store model is available only for 64-bit apps. And for those 64-bit apps, you need to build the universal binary. So you need to include also the 32-bit application. That's another setting in the project options, but something that is absolutely required. For uploading the application, there are external tools. Again, it's not something you do from the IDE, from the App Store, there is an application loader. And from the Play Store, you just can just upload via web browser. You also need to provide a lot of images, uh, screenshots, icons, and a lot of information to the stores, which is the step I'm not going to show you because it's quite time-consuming. The images you can grab from the physical devices, from emulators, you can even make them up. And then wait for approval, which might take consider considerable amount of time, specifically on iOS, so you need to plan your store submissions in advance if, if you want to make the applications uh, public at a given date. That's the summary of the things I'm going to go through. And again, I'm not going to get in details in each step, but I've created a video that will give you the highlights of Android and iOS submission. So this is a very small application, kind of a sample Delphi RSS type of feed uh, built for Android. 
And the thing that you might want to do is use an external tool like this one uh, from Thomas Grubb uh, that lets you from one icon size create all of the different um, icon sizes that are needed. Uh, if you save them all, then what you'll be able to do from your IDE is pick those files from, from that folder and upload them one by one with a proper with a proper size. So 36 by 36, and then you move on to 48 by 48. And, uh, and you keep going, uh, 72 by 72, and so on. There are many for Android. There is a, an equivalent list, uh, but different sizes for iOS. So you need really to use a lot of patience to upload these this various files. But having the generator that creates the file for you is great. Next is giving the remove the common barcadero from the module name and use your own URL. You can just keep module name or fully customize the information. You also need um, a key gen, you need a certificate, and you can check that your password is correct for the um, deployment um, key. So this is the check, and that needs to be in the inside the project configuration so that when you do a deployment of your application, the deployment actually includes the proper signature and the and that is what is uploaded now on the uh, play store configuration you can create your application and the easiest way to do it is just create the entry and then do upload uh, an apk to production so you can uh, find the apk that was created by the deployment process from the delphi ide and then your APK is there. Some of the information like version number is extracted. Um, and then at this point, all you have to do is to fill in the uh, store listing with all of the descriptions, the graphic, the extra information, and you should be good to go with your Android application. For iOS, you first need to register the application ID. That's also needed for the provisioning so the application ID is separate from the actual application listing in the uh, Play Store. Uh, here you need to bundle ID. The bundle ID must match the bundle ID you put into the project options for your application in the Delphi uh, or Rad Studio IDE. So the first step is to register this ID and then you also need to uh, create the new app uh, again in the um, iTunes Connect configuration. You pick the language, and then you can pick that specific uh, ID that was defined in another page of the uh, iTunes Connect website. So this creates the entry in the uh, in iTunes. The entry is required before you actually can uh, upload the submission from the for the store so you need to go through the pricing you can pick free application and then you go to the page prefer for submission where in which again you need to create all the screenshots all of the assets graphic and these are all required so there is quite some effort now back to the application version info you need to have the matching bundle name and this is uh, certainly critical uh, in terms of a step for uh, being able to deploy and, and code sign the application properly. Now you need to create a distribution certificate if you still haven't done so. So that's another step that's separate from creating the ID. Um, this is my distribution certificate created again on one of the Apple websites. That's different from iTunes Connect, but uh, they're all linked and quite easy to find. So now I download my mobile provisioning file, and the next step is actually to make sure this is properly configured, and, and the place where your, uh, your provisioning profiles are configured is Xcode, so you need to, well, not even open Xcode, just start it and go to the uh, configuration. 
and the user accounts and your in your account you can enable and download the provisioning uh, profiles once the provisioning profiles are properly configured in Xcode then this will be visible in your from the RAD Studio IDE through the PA server connection from your Windows machine to to the Mac so now here you, you the system can actually read my provisioning profiles for store deployment because that's what I'm configuring and I can just uh, build I've already set this as a universal uh, binary so I can build I can deploy it uh, this will do all of the steps and create the IPA file um, which is uh, what you have to, to upload with this application uploader you find your IPA file under the scratch deer in PA server and then we can actually do the upload of this file, I take a while at just cutting through some of the timing and just zooming it a little. And once the application has been uploaded with the application uploader, it's it's checked. There is a there are some initial tests, not like the complete testing, but there are some initial validation for the application. If the application is large, not all testing are done. But what happens now is that you can you can now pick the application, the build of the application where you can actually see the icon is wrong in the system and at that point you can, you are ready to go.